FL Studio 6 heralds the release of some brand new effect plugins that takes the quality of the bundled plugins to a totally new level. Included in these new plugins are the EQO, the Fruity Multiband Compressor, Fruity Squeeze, and the Fruity Delay Bank. The EQO plugin is a morphing graphic equalizer. Using it, you can control any frequency band's volume, its panning, and even send a particular band to one of the send tracks in the mixer. Curves are drawn by clicking and dragging with the mouse. If you draw another curve onto another one of the eight banks of curves available, you can then morph from one curve to the next using the morph knob. The shape of the curve can be moved up and down the frequencies using the shift knob. And you use the mix knob to gradually flatten the curve out and then ultimately invert the curve. Notice that there are two curves displayed. The brighter one is the original curve you created, while the duller one is the current morph state of the curve. The smooth knob affects the rate of change when morphing. Left is fast and responsive, and right is slow and will keep moving even after you stop morphing. The overall output of the EQO is controlled by the volume knob. The bandwidth knob at the bottom right of the plugin controls the width of each frequency band. There are three drawing modes. Curve, which is the default, Line, and Pencil, which allows you to edit individual bands. Bands can be deactivated by clicking in the square at the top of the band column. Clicking again will lock the band from any further editing. The Analyze button will generate an inverse EQ curve based on the incoming signal. This is great for crunching up drum loops. The Send function works by assigning a Send track and then drawing a curve on a Send bank. A tip when doing this to get better isolation of frequencies is to turn down the equivalent frequencies in the volume curve. The EQO puts the fun back into EQing and opens up enormous tweaking possibilities, particularly for live use. The Fruity Multiband Compressor allows you to control compression over three frequency ranges. With it, you can apply compression to, say, a whole mix, whereby, for example, only bass frequencies are compressed, leaving high frequencies as they were. With a traditional single compressor application, excessive peaks in one frequency range would trigger the compressor attenuating the volume of all the frequencies at once. In a mastering situation, this is highly undesirable. Essentially, this plugin is made up of three compressors, each with a definable frequency range. The cutoff points of the three frequency bands are controlled using the four knobs underneath the compressor display. The individual bands can be active, muted, or bypassed. Use the mute function to eliminate entire frequency ranges from the output and also to solo bands to allow you more accurate compression editing. When bypassed, all signal within the band's frequency range will pass through unaffected. Each band has the same controls, and these are the same standard controls that you'll find on most compressors. Threshold, Ratio, Knee, Attack, Release, and Gain. The peak meter for each band can be set to monitor the input signal or the output signal. This is controlled by the button below the meter. This behavior is the same for the master in-out meter. The compression meter shows how much compression is being applied to the signal within the band. Hover your mouse over this to read exact values in the hint bar. The multiband compression display shows the input signal in pink and the output signal in red. The speed of the display can be adjusted if you need to get a more accurate visual on the applied compression. Lastly, the compressor can be set to use two different types of filter types to analyze the incoming signal, IIR and FIR. It is recommended that you use the FIR type for mastering applications. Note also that the multiband compressor has a built-in limiter, which when active ensures the output will not exceed 0 dB. The Fruity Squeeze plugin introduces bit reduction and sample rate distortion into FL Studio. It has three sections, square eyes, puncher, and a post or pre-effect filter. It's easiest to demonstrate the effects of squeeze by using an oscilloscope, and to be sure we are just hearing the effect of the plugin, I'll turn up the mix to 100% wet. Here, as I turn up square eyes, you can see and hear that a squared brick wall effect is applied to the signal the further to the right it is turned. The puncher section acts as a gate, alternately passing bursts of unaffected audio and bursts of zero output audio. The preserve knob controls the length of time in samples that the gate passes unaffected audio. 
and the impact knob controls the length of time that zero output audio is passed. The puncture section's effect is most obvious when the amount knob is set to around zero. Amount acts as a dry wet mix control for just the puncture section. With preserve set to zero, setting impact to anything other than zero will immediately kill all sound. This reflects what impact does, which is to reduce a sample volume to zero. As the preserve knob is increased, bursts of the original signal are introduced back into the output. At higher settings of the two controls, you get what starts to resemble a tremolo effect. This is where you can start to mix in the amount knob to get a smoother sounding effect. The relation knob will create several different relationship dynamics between the preserve and the impact controls. At the first setting, the relationship is one to one. Note that the impact knob is now frozen, but moves when preserve is moved. At the second setting, impact is double the preserve amount, and at the third setting, impact is half the preserve amount. The filter section is quite straightforward and similar to other filters in FL Studio. Change the filter type by clicking and dragging in the filter name box. Experiment with the pre and post settings as they give dramatically different results. The gain knob controls the final output of the plugin. The Fruity Delay Bank plugin is an extremely deep and powerful delay filter plugin. Up to eight banks of delays can be combined, each of which can be routed into the next bank to create complex delay structures. Each bank contains an input section, a filter that can be set pre or post the delay, a feedback and feedback filter section, a granulizer, and an output section. To switch to the different banks, select one of the eight tabs at the top of the plugin. While the plugin is selected, you can also scroll through the banks with a wheel on your mouse. A bank is activated by selecting the on button. At this stage, you can also solo the bank, as well as apply pan and volume settings to the input. The filter section applies a filter to the input of the delay. By default, it is off. It can also be applied at the end of the whole filter chain by switching on the post button. Click and drag where it currently says off to change the filter type, and select one of three increasing filter slopes with the one, two, three buttons. If you find that the filter reduces the volume of the echoes too much, then turn up the gain knob. The feedback section is where you control the delay time along with how the successive echoes are processed. The tiny T button sets where the time changes you make here are tempo based when the button is active or free from the tempo. Time changes the delay time. Offset creates an offset in the stereo delay, either a delay in the left or a delay in the right of up to 500 milliseconds. The separation slider affects the stereo spacing of the delays. All the way up gives equal output on both sides. Between the center and the bottom, a much greater stereo effect occurs. Use the volume control to affect how long the echoes last for. Try adjusting this if you are getting runaway feedback. The feedback mode switches norm, ping pong, inverse and off affect the way the delay responds to panned input signals. Off turns all feedback off. Norm keeps the stereo output consistent to the input. Inverse sends the feedback output to the opposite of the input. And ping pong flips the output to the opposite side on each successive repeat. The small button to the left controls whether or not the first echo will be processed by the filtering or not. The feedback filter section contains the exact same controls as the filter section. Once again, you can use the gain knob to increase the volume of the echoes. Be careful with the resonance control. This can quickly emphasize a feedback loop, causing your ears and your speakers to bleed. The grain section chops the echoes into chunks. Division sets the size of the chunks. And shape affects the envelope applied to each chunk. Smaller values are more angular, and larger values are smoother. The output section provides a mixer for the delay. The main thing here is the next knob which controls the amount of the output that is then sent to the next delay bank. When routing one delay bank into another, it's important to be aware that the banks can run serially or in parallel. To run in parallel, you need do no more than activate the next bank. To run in series, you'll need to reduce the input volume of the next bank to zero, which is the centre position. The top of the plugin contains global controls. Dry controls the amount of dry signal in the output, and wet the amount of delayed signal. In controls the volume of the input to all banks, and feedback controls the overall volume and accordingly the number of feedback echoes that each bank generates. This is another parameter that you will use to help ensure that you don't get any runaway feedback problems.